Yo, what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another Minnesota Twins discussion video. This one is a very important video if you are going to watch the Yankees Twins ALDS on Friday because... Well, if you're a Twins fan like I am, that's probably why you're here. Uh, this is going to be how the Twins are going to beat the Yankees. Now, I'm going to do a series preview on this tomorrow with the pitchers, with you know, the lineups, maybe if they have those, all of that detail. Uh, that's kind of come tomorrow. This is just going to be a basic overview of what the Twins are going to have to do, regardless of who is in there, what they're going to have to do to beat the Yankees. So here we go. We're going to start with pitching, and then we're going to go to batting. Pitching is very simple. I think there's there's basically two things that you have to do if you're going to beat the Yankees. One, throw strikes, okay? So you got to make them hit, right? I think this is super basic. Obviously, every single team wants to throw strikes, but you've got to learn or use what you've learned from the games that are already been played. So we've looked at the NL wild card, right? If you watched the game last night, you saw Woodruff, right? He threw a lot of strikes, and they were all fastballs. That's a different thing, but they were a lot of strikes high in the zone. Now, that could get a little scary because you saw what Trey Turner did. He hit a home run off of it, off the fastball. I think it was on a 3-2 count. But if you throw strikes, you're likely to be able to throw the changeup, throw the curveball. Even if Gibson gets in there, he throws the fastball, the sinker. He can use his slider, which he's like fourth in the league on, or second, third in the league on swing and misses. That's just if he pitches, for example, right? But you've got somebody like Barrios who can really locate his fastball. That's what he's really good at. Even if it's not 95, 96 like it used to be, he can get it up there. But if he throws strikes like he does, that can set up his breaking ball. That sets up his changeup so much better, and it's because he's around the zone. Now, I am a big fan of throwing the fastball. And I like what Oda Rizzi does in particular with the high fastball. Now, you can't get carried away with this, especially guys who don't overpower guys, right? Because if you look at Woodruff, right, from the Brewers throwing uh, in, the NLC, uh, in the NL wildcard game, he threw like 100 miles an hour, basically every single pitch, and he was still around the zone, right? So that's, of course, what you want. But for somebody like Barrios, who really just focuses in on the strike zone, You've got to figure out where, you know, you're going to lie with your speeds and then attack those spots. So somebody like Barrios, who throws 92 to 95, but he's really down in the 92s. He's not going to overpower somebody like Aaron Judge, you know, like LeMayhew, like uh, Gardner, I guess, who has been really good. I don't want to get into the strictly power guys, but the guys who can get the bat on the ball, like LeMayhew in particular, who, who can put the ball pretty much anywhere, right? That's... You've got to be able to throw that fastball in the strike zone, and you've got to be able to figure out what you're going to do if you can't overpower somebody. So like Barrios, high and inside, high and tight. Odorizzi does a really good job at this at 93. Those are good pitches, but when you start missing over the zone, you start missing badly, 92 is going to go a long way in the other direction. So those are two big things that the Twins are going to have to do, right? And of course, that's very basic. That's what every team tries to do. But why is it so important? The Yankees can hit, right? I think our pitching has the better edge. And I'll get into that in step three in the bullpen. But I think our starting pitching and their starting pitching are very similar, that is why you've got to stay in the strike zone. You've got to throw strikes. You can't be walking people. We all know how deadly walks are, and that goes back to stage one. Stage two would be locate the fastball. Throw the fastball a lot. And if you're not going to overpower people, that's what that high fastball in those deadly spots really means. But thirdly is the bullpen. I think our bullpen is set up a little bit better than theirs. They've got, you know, Chapman. They've got a couple of other guys who have been up and down this season. Same with us. But we have been so good in the second half that we, I think, have a little bit of an advantage, especially with our guys that can throw that good fastball, right? Barrios, 92 to 93. Same with Oda Rizzi. Dobnik, I don't even know throws that. But they're all very good at what they do. You hand it over to the bullpen. I mean, May throws 97. Gratterall throws 100. Then you've got Duffy who throws 96, 97. Sergio Romo who throws 80, right? That's going to be important. But then you've got Rogers from the left side. Again, throws 94, 95. Those guys are going to be key. And I think if you keep the gas on them, right? You go Duffy, May, then throw in Sergio Romo. That could really change up the timing with the hitters, right? Because you've got somebody hopefully going six innings in Barrios or Rizzi that can use that high fastball, that can use that 92 to 93. 
then you go to the bullpen and you just hammer it on 97, 98, and hopefully they won't be able to catch up to him, especially if you throw that high fastball. But then if you want to throw a curveball in there, you go to Sergio Romo. He throws the 85-mile-an-hour fastball, the 70-mile-an-hour slider. That's going to really throw their timing off, and I think that is what the key is, that we cannot overuse our bullpen, but definitely keep the pressure on them by throwing the 97, 98-mile-an-hour fastballs that Gratterall may and Duffy have. So that's the pitching side of things. Of course, if I missed anything, let me know, but let's go to the batting. So, of course, batting is how you score runs. Pitching stops the runs, and I think if they stick to that basic you know, three rules or so, that is going to give them their best chance. Now, I know, just like we saw in the NL Wild Card game, you're going to give up home runs, especially to the Yankees. You're going to give up runs, but you've got to figure out how to score some runs yourself. And the biggest thing I think for batting is going to be not trying to hit the home run. So I've told you guys the home run record is super cool, but we cannot try to hit home runs, especially in Yankee Stadium. That's going to be tempting, right? Especially, you know, 312, 314 down the lines. That is going to be tempting. But the key to being a good baseball team is how do you score runs by not hitting the home run? Using the small ball techniques, right? Of course, we don't have Buxton. We don't have Adrianza, who are two really good contact guys. We've got players like Rosario, uh, Miguel Sano, Cruz, that are all very good at the long ball. But this is what's really important. And I said this the other day. I would really like to see these guys try to go to the other side of the field, especially Nelson Cruz and Miguel Sano. They don't have to go home run power to the other side of the field because, of course, I mean, that would be great because it's a short porch. But if they go the other way, I think that would really change how they shift them, right? How the defense wants to shift the players if they want to shift the players, as well as that's going to be key for when they're runners in scoring position. That's the biggest thing. Playing small ball and getting runners home at, when they're in scoring position, especially with less than two outs, right? Because we that's in step three or whatever that we're on, that two out hitting is important. But last night in the wild card game, there were so many times the Brewers had runners on first and second, second and third, I think even at one point, with one out, and they did not score any runs. If we can figure out how to go to the other side of the field, hit and run opportunities. You're probably scoring more than one run on a hit. If you can go the other way, maybe there's a shift involved. Look at what Rosario did the other day when he went to the third base side. There was absolutely nobody there, got a double, scored a couple of runs. That is perfect. I would love to just see the guys stick the bat out there and you know make good contact, of course, have a good at bat. Stick the bat out there, let the ball travel, and go the other way with it. I think that's going to be incredibly important with runners in scoring position with less than two outs. Of course, Getting the runners home is the biggest thing. You've got to learn how to get those guys home with less than two outs, and that is, that's what we really need to work on. But not trying to hit the home run, especially if we're up in a game. That's, good. that's, that's step four. But especially trying to do the small things, right? Step three is, of course, two out hitting. We are so good with two outs. I think that's incredibly important that we keep doing that. And, you know, it's, it's basically every guy – in the lineup that is, is capable of producing that two out hit that is going to help us win. It's just, can they do it in the crucial spots? I've talked about the three consecutive hits. A lot of it comes with two outs for some reason. You know, the pitcher maybe lets off or something, but you've got one player on, then a guy draws a walk, and now you've got to figure out how to get the guy home with runners in scoring position and with two outs. I guess they kind of go together. Um, you've got to try to get three consecutive hits, four consecutive hits, five consecutive things where people are moving. That's going to score your runs and more than likely get you out front in the lead, give you the win, etc. The last thing I think is the most important, I've probably said that four or five times now, but the most important thing is score first, especially at Yankee Stadium, right? Take the crowd out of the game. We saw this in the NL wildcard game. The Brewers scored first in the first two innings on a couple of home runs. Again, we're not saying we need to hit the home run ball, but we're the away team. We get to bat first. If we can go out there and score runs in the first two innings, that significantly helps our chances statistically and atmospherically. I think I think that's a word because if we could score first, that likely gives us like a 66, 67 percent chance of winning the game, first of all. And if we could take the atmosphere out of the Yankee Stadium and give it to our pitchers, our bats, that's significantly going to help us do better in the game, uh, especially at Yankee Stadium. Of course, there's more things that transition from that going home. You've got to score first still at home, keep the atmosphere in it, and then you've got to you know, figure out how to 
hit the ball you know with different dimensions and stuff at home but those are just the four basic things that I think the Twins could really do to better their chances against the Yankees it's going to be tough of course they're still the Yankees they've got a lot of power they've got good bats but I think if the Twins can follow these rules they're very basic Follow these steps. I think they're going to have a really, really good chance, especially, you know, being one of the best road record teams in the in the league, in all of history. I mean, there's a lot of good things going for this Twins team that I think are really going to help them this year compared to other years. Uh, the last thing, just throw it out there. It doesn't have anything to do with pitching or batting. You guys have mentioned it. I've mentioned it. The Twins have mentioned it. This means nothing compared to you know, to the last couple of teams, right? We we haven't won a playoff game since 2004. We've gotten swept by the Yankees in what, like seven consecutive times or something like that. Who cares, right? It's a different team. It's a different series. It's a different year. We've got new management, new leadership. Everything is different. There's only like four or five players that have played on that 2017 team because of, you know, they, and they were in their sophomore season, right? So we've gone out and got a ton of players, got a ton of new help. This is a different team. There's no need to worry about what happened in the past. We're going to be fine. I think we're statistically a better team than the Yankees pitching-wise and batting-wise. I think we have more of a leadership than their team does. Um, I think we have more you know, connection with uh, the, you know, how we're playing the game. I think we're looking really good. So hopefully the Twins will do that. I don't know, you know. It's baseball. Anything can happen. But I think those are very good steps to take uh, pitching-wise and batting-wise that, that will give the Twins a really good chance. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys will stick around with me through the postseason supporting the Twins. That's all I got for you guys today. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and we will see you guys tomorrow for the preview. That'll be a lot of fun. Uh, Twins-Yankees coming up Friday. Game one of the ALDS. See you then.